Hello, Rana. Welcome to Show Studio. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you've been very, very busy today. <laughs> um, I'm going to dive straight in and talk about um, you're kind of known for doing documentaries on a, like a plethora of artists, um, Jürgen Teller, William Eccleston. So what is it that made you decide to go for a designer, particularly one who's so unique, such as Dries? There are a couple of reasons for it. The, the most important reason was that I met Dries in 2010. And I was shooting a film about Jürgen Teller at that time, who was uh, photographing one of Dries' collections in his garden in Antwerp for American Vogue. And so, it, to be honest, it was the first time that I saw the collections of Dries. Mm -hmm. And I liked it immediately. I, I think I had never seen something like that before, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. It was so beautiful, the fabrics, the shapes of it, the colors, the prints. It was a flower collection. And the whole setting was very beautiful, too, because it all happened in his beautiful garden mm. uh, of his house. Huge garden. Uh, you, you, you could shoot for three days and never get to the back to the same location. <laughs> and that was wonderful, too. And, yeah, and I also liked the person because I never got close to the fashion industry before, to be honest. And, I mean, I read things. I, no, I, I did an interview with Karl Lagerfeld once, but it was a short interview. It was, a, it was for a film about... Black and white. Black and white artists who work in black and white. So it was more... It was not so much about his designs and his, his, his uh, creative process and so... But you know Karl Lagerfeld, how he, how he is, and that's, that was my imagination or my image of, of a fashion designer. <laughs> and then I met Dries, and who was completely different. He was quite normal, and I don't mean that in a negative sense, I mean it in a very, very positive sense. And I liked that, and I had a chance to chat with him while we had a lunch break or something. It was all very normal. I asked him how he started designing fashion. So I quite got interested. In, and also at that time, as you mentioned, I did many films about photographers. And when you do, I, I made like 10 films about Eggleston, about Anton Corbein, Jürgen Teller, uh, August Sander, Herbert List, big names in, in, in the history of photography. But after having made 10 films, I, it was a little bit repetitive. And I, at that time, in 2010, I was open for something new. In the beginning, it was very hard to get to convince TV editors uh, to contract you for a film on photography. It was a hard struggle because in the beginning, they said, we are dealing with moving images, not with still photography. So why do you want to make a film about photography? Right. Sounds quite ridiculous from today's point of view because photography such an essential part of the art world and accepted in the art world, which was not the case when I started to make those films. So that, that, that was a big problem. But after 10 films, I thought, I, I've seen enough and I was only interested in a few photographers. Um, and I still would make, would make a film about a photographer. That's not, that's not the, uh, the problem. Mm -hmm. So I was open for new ideas and for new uh, persons, protagonists, because I mostly do portraits, portraying people, mostly people who, who work in the creative uh, field or in a creative business. Yeah, so, so, so I was quite interested in the world of trees. And also, to be very honest, I like to do films about subjects where I have no idea about, mm. uh, because that's the big advantage of my of my profession. That I, with my camera, I, I get access to a world that was unknown to me before, and. I have also some friends who do sometimes who said, "How can you make a film about whatever architecture? You don't. You're not an expert." Mm. I think it's the best, best, uh, best way to do something with a very, how should I say, uh, uh, innocent view. If you're not an expert, ten films later, like my photography films, I know sometimes too much that I think, okay, I've seen that before, so let's put it that way, let's shoot it that way, and let's talk about this 
in this and that way. So, so fashion was really new for me, and, and I liked that. And third reason, last reason, that made me, uh, uh, caused interest in, in, in me, was in 2010, there was the big scandal of John Galliano, who got fired from mm -hmm. Dior. Yeah. And I read many articles about the pressure in the fashion industry. That was maybe one of the reasons for his fa f f failures his behavior, and I, I thought it was quite interesting. So I, there were many reasons I got interested in that work. Also, at the same time, there was a program on Arte, which is a channel I worked for before, German-French art TV channel, and they had a program uh, called Fashion Week, and when I had met Trees and told them that I would love to make a film about him, I got interested if they would like to have it, they said immediately, oh, this is so great. We follow That's him brilliant. for years and we never succeeded. He always said no to, to our proposals and projects. So if you get the chance to work with him, we, we, would, be, we would love to have the film. That's brilliant. And you, you said um, Dries, you consider Dries to be normal in a positive sense. Um, and Dries is known for being very discreet, very a calming presence, so to speak. Um, but there's some amazingly candid and intimate moments in this film. Do you feel kind of honoured that you've managed to capture this amazing aspect of Dries that nobody's actually seen before? It's a, such an insight into his life. For, for, for me, that's the wonderful part of my work. And in the beginning, when you start shooting, or even before starting shooting, it's always a struggle because, I, I mean, I know myself. I know how I work, and I know that trust... Uh, from my side and also from the other side is, is very uh, essential for, for my work. But Dries, he meets me once, twice mm. for a short time. He's, he's a very busy man. So, of course, he's, he's somebody who knows all kinds of people. And I think there was trust from the very beginning, very beginning, otherwise he wouldn't have said yes after three years of asking if we can make this project or not. It took a long time. Uh, three years, but, that's amazing. Yeah, but, but there's always, I, I, I say, it's like a magic moment when you shoot a documentary and in the beginning you're an outsider. You, you come to a studio, to a show. Show is easier because there are lots of people around backstage so you can hide and move and you're one among a mm -hmm. hundred other people. But when you are in his studio or even in his home, there's only one person, he himself, maybe his partner, or three or four other designers who work with him in a team. And then you are there with a big camera and then it's all about you, uh, how to make yourself invisible, that's, that's the goal. And I'm not doing this by working with very tiny equipment, I work with a huge camera. I, I, I think it doesn't matter if, if you have a, uh, have a smaller or big camera, the decisive question is what is your attitude and how is your behavior? Mm -hmm. and, and the goal is to be the fly on the wall, that's how documentary filmmakers normally call that process. And it's always a magical moment when you once after 10, 12 shooting days, you, you feel, you really feel it. And it's for me a very happy moment that they don't recognize you anymore. <laughs> and then that's where you can start working. And that moment happened also with trees. It took a little bit longer <laughs> than normally. And that's also it has to do with his personality on the one side, but it has to do a lot also with the industry itself, I think, because that's the big difference I, I realized when you make a film about a photographer, a cre creative person, it's easier to follow the process and and when you, when you are shooting, you never see the result immediately, what's mm -hmm. inside the camera, for example. Mm -hmm. But when you work with a fashion designer, everything is visible. So when he starts from scratch, with his fabrics, as you see in the film, mm. that's the most difficult part. That was the most difficult part for trees to to show that to a public, knowing that this is filmed and that will be on a screen someday. And and I understand that because 
fashion designers are trained, educated at universities, so it's in their blood, more or less, to deliver a perfect image at the end. So normally you, 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 the design is shown to the public when it's ready for the show, and then you do the photographs, and then it goes online or in magazines or wherever. But, uh, but it's, I think it was very brave of him to show that very first step of a He does show. say that his main focus is the show itself. So to be able to have this amazing documentation of the whole process up to the show is, is really incredible, particularly for Dries, because he is so private. But you, you're saying, it's just, is it just you with a camera? You don't have a team, it's just, just you? It, it depends. It can be only me with a camera and a wireless microphone. And uh, Dries wanted me to shoot, for example, in his house only alone. He, he's, it's, it's a very private place, very important place for him and his partner and for his whole life. And, and so, so he did not want to have a team there in the house. When I was shooting with Jürgen, in 2010, I wasn't even allowed to enter the house with a camera. I once did, because there was a very beautiful moment. Jürgen had his daughter with him and a friend of the daughter, because they were both big fans of Dakota Fanning, and she was the actress wearing Dries Collection for oh, the okay. for the for the uh, photo session. And there was a very like Eggleston moment in the evening when the two girls fell asleep on the sofa in the in one of the so uh, rooms of of uh, of trees and Jürgen grabbed his camera went in the house because it was just focused on the on the on this beautiful Eggleston moment I would say and I followed him because I was also fascinated fascinated and immediately understood what he was looking for because he's a big fan of Eggleston and I am too and so I entered the living room with the with the camera and then the at that time the PR person of trees said no filming in the house, no photographs in the house, so I had to get out. This time it was very diff different. Mm -hmm. They trusted much more, and they knew that it was important to show the house also. And, uh, but he, they didn't want to have a crew there. In the studio it was different, in the atelier in Antwerp, because then you have six, seven people working on a table or on a model or whatever. And then it's a bit difficult to work only with a with a camera microphone, even if I have a very special and a very good one, which is a stereo microphone going different directions, so I can cover a lot, and I get very close with my camera. So normally, if we, if I would make a film about you, I would sit like that distance. So if I'm Dries, but you're Dries, and close. I have the camera on my shoulder. Oh my and, goodness! And, <laughs> and yeah, but I, I think that's. It, it, and I always try to stay in eye contact. If, we, if, I, if I have a conversation, that's very important. Uh, because it, in the end, I think that's the quality of my films. And many people say it. It's like they have the impression they have met the person. Once somebody told, said something very, very beautiful to me, I, I really loved that. It was the first or second screening in Antwerp. Dries organized a private screening in Antwerp when the film was finished before the official premiere. And there was a girl coming, coming up to me after the screening and she said, you know what, I had to close my eyes a few times during the film. I said, why? And she said, to realize that I'm not operating the camera <laughs> and entering the world. I said, this is That's wonderful. magic. Yeah, it, made, it really made my day because this is what I would love to achieve. And, and yeah, that, that, that was beautiful. So either I shoot alone with a wireless microphone and the camera, or I had a sound man in the, in the uh, studio of trees with me. And at the shows also, it was with the sound man. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the kind of the element of surprise in this film. There's so many things that people are kind of watching and being like, I didn't realize that about Dries, or I know he's a very demure person, but when I was watching him in his private home particularly, he's so particular with everything he does. The flower arranging with his partner Patrick and the moving of the item a quarter to the inch to the right and just everything so ornamental, so precise, so wonderful. And that really surprised me. I knew he was very... Um, determined and specific in his work, but I didn't realize that he was so particular. And was there anything when you were filming that you were really surprised by? Did he shock you at all? 
sh shock, not not shocking, but I, I was also surprised in the in the moment where th that you talk about, and you see it in the film because I was following him, and mm -hmm. he was his partner was organizing some bra bigger branches. He's the guy who's responsible for the big branches in the house. Trees takes more care of the, the uh, tiny or normal fl size flowers, and uh, and I discovered that parallel movement when when Patrick was organizing all the details on the <laughs> on the uh, above the fireplace and, and so Andres was doing the same thing and I, w I didn't see that before but I thought having everything in mind when you shoot a film of course you have some ideas before that you want to talk about and, and especially perfectionism is, 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 is an important uh, issue in the whole fashion world, so I wanted to talk about it in interviews, what, what he thinks about it, but uh, in that moment I thought, this shows much more than a thousand words or, or, or questions and interviews, telling. and it shows who he is, and many pe a few people, when you look at the film, when I, I'm there at screenings, they think, oh, this is crazy somehow, so, so or... or also a little bit not insane is uh, the wrong word, but but it's it, it can cause problems in your everyday life when you are a perfectionist sure. like like, the, like this. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's it's so essential for the work that he does because it's all about making this a little bit smaller, one millimeter less or more is a decisive question. That's mm -hmm. what it, what it's all about, and I'm fascinated fascinated by by this. And this really surprised me. I was also surprised, and you see it in the film, when how I react in the moment when Dries says, I always try to have uh, uh, a correlation between the flowers, the yellow, flowers, the yellow in the flowers and, in, and the yellow of the, of the chair. And I didn't, I didn't realize before that it was so much about details in his, in his mind and his, in his way of thinking. And uh, other things surprised me also. I think also the, the amount of work surprised me. He once told me that he has designs like 5,000 single pieces mm -hmm. go through his hand in the design process each year. That's really a lot. The, 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 the long days he works as a filmmaker, you also you are used to have long 12, 14 hour days, but sometimes he has even longer days when he's getting closer to the show. And I was also surprised by the amount of ideas that he has and different, the variety of ideas. Normally you think, also with trees, when, 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 when you think, so you've seen, you've seen a collection, then like, I don't want to mention any other names, but in brands that are well known, you discover immediately or realize immediately what brand it is. Mm -hmm. With Dries, for me, it's different. When I look at his whole career, his more than 100 collections, meanwhile, for me, it's always a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I, there's an overall idea behind it that I understood Definitely. after making that film. But when you look at each single collection, it's it's really surprising that the, what, what, what how much creativity is in that person, I think, He's very in intelligent. He knows a lot. He has a has a huge background. He's he's also absorbing a lot of things. He sees only for a split of a second sometimes, and he he puts it all together in his brain and in in his creative process in the end. And and that's really surprising. And I'm interested in. He definitely talks about kind of eschewing the word fashion and staying away from the fashion circus, and you mentioned that you were surprised by how much work there is to do, and you were with him for quite a long time, a mm. year. So was it important for you to document this kind of him pushing away from the schedule, and how did you feel about the, the pace of work and him trying to push away from the norm? The norm? I think that the pace is changing, it depends on if it's early in the year or, or getting closer to the shows, especially then the pace is, is, ha is, is faster, you faster. You, you notice that, yeah, I think. So when in the beginning of a collection, let, let, let's say when you see in the film, when I started with the Mintz collection, that was like March, April, 
uh, early in the in, in in his year, and it's more quiet. And then the, the, the fabrics come in, and he sees different things. He chooses different things. And it's not hectic at all. But the, the closer it gets to the show, the more hectic it is. And also, the winter collections are different than the summer collections. I think because for him, fabrics are very important, and he uses different layers of, of fabrics, and especially in the winter collection, when you look at the, the winter collection uh, that, that's seen in the film or shown in the film in the beginning, it's incredible how, and, and, and they really struggled also for the show to, to handle all those different details and everything. They had too many outfits, and uh, the models had to change outfits, and and then there are so many details about the belts and the bags and whatever is is, is important, and uh, so they hardly managed to get the models out on time, or they were a little bit losing control. It was a very very intense moment filming that also behind the scenes, but. The, the the audience didn't real, realize because it was did. so beautiful <laughs> and I mean Trees of course knows every details and all, every little mistakes and as he says in the film he sees more the mistakes than sometimes the beauty of the result <laughs> and and uh, yeah so it was a great success it was, it was a great show but there's always good pressure, and especially at the, towards the end of the years, because then you have the overlapping of men's and women's collections, winter mm -hmm. collections, both very rich collections, and that's really a lot of work for him. And then at the same time, um, he, he depends on the manu fa uh, uh, fabric manufacturers. He, he works with... Uh, uh, companies in Italy, for, for example, and they all go on holiday, the closer it gets to the, to the Christmas uh, holidays. That's a very tough time for Dries with a lot of work and sleepless nights and so. I don't focus on that so much in the, in the film, as, as you've seen. Many people say, when, when you look at the film, what's happening? There's never that, that hectic that you know from other fashion films. You can get that also, but that was not my focus. That's that's the reason why I don't show it so much, because I thought that's a little bit repetitive about the other fashion films that I've seen before. They all focus on the drama behind the scenes, and that was not my intention. I really wanted to show who Dries is, how he thinks, what's his philosophy, is what's his what does he think about fashion, about his collection, designing clothes, and about the fas fashion world today. Maybe also a little bit. And and that was my 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 interest, and and I think that's also a reason why he had uh, chosen me to make the film about him, because many filmmakers before had asked for permission to shoot a film about him, but he always rejected it. But knowing that I'm not coming from the fashion world with a different focus or point of view on him, I think that was important for him. Mm. And yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm happy with the result. And and yeah, it's not it's not there is hectic, but it's not my main focus. And I, I also think you don't see in hectic what the designer is really about, what 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 his his uh, yeah, what his opinion about or, or his approach to fashion is. In hectic, everybody, somebody, some people shout, scream, whatever they they. Uh, get unpolite. Dries never does. He he always does everything. Uh, handles it with, with with himself more or less. He's That's very graceful. Yeah, he's very graceful. He's, he never. I never saw him shouting. And of course, he doesn't show it so in front of a camera. Mm. But I also talk to people uh, who work with him for a long time, and and they they said he never does. And he never gets gets impatient or so that's not I mean he did his 101 shows recently had he had his 100 and first show and so he has a lot of routine also but 
Every time it's different, every, every time it's new. It's the same thing with documentary films. I did so many portraits about different people, photographers. Each time you think, okay, now you found a system, you can make it easier or quicker. Mm. Uh, but it, but it's, every time it's like a, li a little bit like the first film you make. But it's good that way because that's also something that keeps you from repeating yourself and 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 yeah, it's it's more excitement within your, yourself, and that's important, I think, for for good result. Well, it was an absolutely beautiful film. Thank you Thank so much you. for coming Thank and speaking you. to me. Thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs>